Who will win the major acting categories at this year's Oscars? And will Oppenheimer take home the big prize? Hi, welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show where I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines, entertainment, and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today's show is all about the 2024 Oscars. Okay, let's jump into the show. I'm going to be sharing my predictions for the major categories at this year's Oscars. Also going to share some details about the Oscars this year, everything you need to know going into the show. First thing is first, the show is Sunday, March 10th. So it's this upcoming Sunday, mark your calendars. And it is starting, the show is actually starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Now, You might think that sounds normal. Usually the Oscars start at 8 p.m. Eastern time, but this year they made the smart decision, in my opinion, to start an hour early because let's be honest, the Oscars is a very long show. It often goes over its allotted three hour time slot, which means that if it starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the people on the East Coast are having to stay up past 11 p.m. on a Sunday night in order to see who wins best picture. I've never understood why the Oscars are on late. It's a Sunday. We can, if the Super Bowl can start at like 5.30 Eastern time, then the Oscars can start early too, right? Like I think we can, I think we can make adjustments. So this is a, a, a very smart move by ABC, the Oscars as a whole. So make sure to set your DVRs, set your, set your timers so that you know, starts on time. It's also daylight savings this weekend as well. So that that might factor into also the timing of it all. As I mentioned, it's on ABC, which means Jimmy Kimmel is returning as a host, his fourth time hosting the Oscars. Honestly, I think Jimmy Kimmel is a fantastic Oscars host. I mean, the way that he handled that whole Moonlight, La La Land debacle, I believe that was his very first year hosting the show as well. And he handled that so well because, wow, what a stressful moment that was. And I'm sure as a host, very stressful to have to think on your feet and figure out what to do and how to handle the whole situation. He was great at that. I just feel like he does, he doesn't try too hard. I think that's like the fatal flaw of any Oscars host or any host in general is when they, when you can just tell that they're trying way too hard. Sometimes the best thing you can do as a host is just sort of like, present what's going on and then just step back and not try to make the whole show about you. And I feel like Jimmy does a good job of that. So I'm looking forward to having him back. I feel like he'll do a good job, especially compared to some other hosts we've had this awards season. Looking at you, Joe Coy. Um, I think he's going to do a good job. Another thing to remember if you're like, what else am I going to really like about the Oscars or what should I watch for? Ryan Gosling is performing. He is performing. I'm just Ken from the movie Barbie. You guys, I'm honestly, this is probably the thing I'm looking forward to most about the entire show. I love, we, there's performances every single year, all the best, or I shouldn't say all the best, but most of the time, a few or all of the best original song um, nominees get performed during the Oscars. And typically, they're songs that are sung and performed by artists, musicians, people who are used to performing on stage um, or singing on stage. But I always love it when it's not like a natural singer, performer, artist who then has to go and perform the the song. I'm thinking about when Bradley Cooper performed with Lady Gaga, Shallow during the Star is Born run. And so to see Ryan Gosling get up there, and also I'm just Ken, if you've seen the movie Barbie or you've seen the performance, like it's a very theatrical sort of um, silly, maybe doesn't give it enough credit, but it's, it's not like a super serious dramatic song. It's very fun. And so anyway, I'm just, I'm very much looking forward to it. I think he's going to do a really, really great job. And this will be like his final send off as Ken, because when the Oscars ends, like, the Barbie chapter will officially close. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, let's get into some of the categories for this year's Oscars. Again, we're just going to cover the major ones, the big ones, because honestly, I can't be the one to tell you who's going to win best sound or best production design or costume design. Like, I just... 
I don't really know. I, I, I'm I not, uh, I don't think qualified to talk about that stuff. Not that I'm qualified to talk about this, but anyway. Okay, first category, we're gonna cover Best Supporting Actress. The nominees are Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks, The Color Purple, America Ferreira Barbie, Jodie Foster Nyad, and Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. This is going 100% to Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. She's basically won every single award thus far, every precursor. I don't think anyone has even come close to competing with her. She's going to win this category and it's very deserved. She's excellent in that movie. Okay, moving on, Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are Sterling K. Brown, American Fiction, Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo, Poor Things. Again, much like Divine Joy Randolph, this one's pretty much locked and loaded going to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. No one's come close to RDJ this award season. He's been killing on the award circuit. Every single speech he's given has been funny and fun. And it's also kind of a it's time award. Obviously, he's been in the industry for a very, very, very long time making great work. Um, so this is going to go to him. There's a part of me that is sort of upset. Upset's the wrong word. That's probably too dramatic. That's bummed. Ryan Gosling isn't going to be acknowledged because I think he's so good as Ken. And I think, again, it's a part that is like underestimated or it's not taken as seriously because it's a comedy performance. But I actually think it the degree of difficulty is very high. Um, but I think a nomination is, is probably the best he can do for that. All right, best actress. The nominees are Annette Bening for Nyad, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller, Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, and Emma Stone, Poor Things. Okay, this is probably the closest race of them all. I do think it's gonna go to Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. She won the SAG Award um, this past week, or I guess two weeks ago, I'm not exactly sure when that was, but um, but if there's to be an upset, it's going to be Emma Stone winning for Poor Things. Like, I don't, I wouldn't bet on it, on it happening, but it wouldn't shock me if it did. It's sort of, this category is kind of reminding me of the year, I, I think it was the A Star Is Born year, when Glenn Close was winning everything in the Best Actress category um, for her role in The Wife. And then at the Oscars, Olivia Coleman ended up winning for um, The Favorite, which is, an, which is interesting because that movie was a Lanthimos film, which Poor Things, which Emma Stone is nominated for, is also a Lanthimos film. But anyway, wouldn't shock me. Again, I don't think it's going to happen. Emma Stone's already an Oscar winner. I don't know that there's like a huge groundswell of support. Like I don't, I don't, th I don't think people feel like they have to reward Emma Stone. You know what I mean? Because they, they, they they've already given her an award before. But it wouldn't shock me. Okay, final acting category: Best Actor nominees are Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Coleman Domingo, Rustin, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. Again, this is kind of a done deal. Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer. He's won pretty much every single precursor. I guess if there was to be an upset, maybe it's Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers, but it's not going to happen. I would be shocked if it happened. I think this one's going to Mr. Murphy. Um, all right, two more categories. I just want to quickly talk about Best Director um, because obviously this is the category that Greta Gerwig wasn't nominated in and people made the whole you know fuss about that. I do think this is going to go to Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Um, I, I, I would be shocked if it went to anybody else but him. And then the final category, Best Picture, the nominees are American Fiction, An Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Kills of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. And this, again, is going to Oppenheimer. They have swept every category or every award show award thus far. They've just, they've cleaned up this award season. Um, I can't really see them losing this. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's any movie that even comes close to competing with them. It's not like there's like a two-way race or there's one film that feels like it's very much in second place. I honestly couldn't tell you what movie I think is in second place. Maybe Poor Things. Um, but 
it's going to Oppenheimer. I think we can, if you're going to bet on the Oscars this year, um, I think Oppenheimer is probably the way to go. But that's just my own opinion, okay? It's just my own opinion. And I also think too, and I wonder if other people feel this way, this year's Oscars seems very much like already decided because there's so many precursor awards that happen prior to the Oscars. You, got, you, you very much get a sense going into the Oscars who has a chance or who's, who's in the lead, but it feels like this awards season, like every single award has basically been decided. And I wonder if that kind of, I, I just wonder if that ruins the show itself. Like if going into it, you just know who's going to win. I, I think it maybe makes it less exciting. And I wonder if the Oscars would ever consider moving their show up um, in the year. I don't know when exactly, but pushing forward to kind of like make there be a bit more mystery and also for Oscar voters to not be able to see who's won all the precursor awards. Like that they would really have to make the decision based off of who they genuinely feel is the best and who they like the most rather than, oh, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s won every single award so far. So therefore I should vote for him. So I don't know. I feel like it would be a lot more fun going into the Oscars if you were like, I don't know who's going to win this category, you know? Um, but I don't know if they really care about that. Obviously the Oscars ultimately at the end of the day, it's a marketing show. They're promoting films. They want you to go out and watch all these movies. That's their, that's their goal. Um, and there's other ways, other things to enjoy with the Oscars besides who wins. Obviously, like I said, the performances, the celebrities, the presenters, the hosts, stuff can always go wrong at the Oscars. We know that for sure. So um, I think it's going to be a fun show. Nonetheless, kind of send off a, ward season and um we'll have to wait until the emmys in the fall for our next big award show all right guys that is our show for today let me know in the comments who you think is going to win the big awards if you think there might be an upset and best actress please share that as well make sure to subscribe to our channel follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time bye